for his first ever PBA title. His opponent in tonight's opening match is Steady Dave Houston, who has begun the championship round final three times this year from the number four position. Making his first ever appearance in the final five and bowling from the middle of the stack, 26-year-old Jeff German of Wheeling, West Virginia. In the runner-up position and seeking his first trip to the winner's circle since 1988, six-time PBA champion Mark Williams. And tonight's top seed, after averaging a blistering 244 for the final eight games of match play, Ryan Voss. Welcome everyone to Brunswick Deer Park Lanes, located in Lake Zurich, Illinois. Good evening, everyone. I'm Denny Schreiner, along with PBA Hall of Famer Mike Durbin. And, Michael, we've come to the end of the fall tour, one of my favorite stops on the PBA tour, the Brunswick Memorial World Open, because it's a global event. The finest players from all over the world converge here, and they bowl for 45,000 first. And uh, there are 20 international players coming from 15 different countries to buy for that $45,000 first place prize. I can remember when I used to bowl this event, it was always a privilege and a pleasure to bowl with some of the international bowlers. Let's get quickly to the stepladder. In the number five position, a very talented player in Richard Wolf, still looking for that ever-elusive first win. And he was the leader here for a number of rounds, just barely hung on to make the telecast. The word on Rich Wolf is he's a player with outstanding potential, but it's never really yet developed. A player who realized his potential early on in his career and has been very consistent ever since, Dave Husted, the veteran, would love to add this crown to his already illustrious career. And he's always been known as one of the nice guys on tour. He's won the Steve Nagy Sportsmanship Award more than once. But his last victory was in 1990 in Las Vegas. Uh, that's been a long time. Dave would like to end that drought. Our number three seed, Jeff German of Wheeling, West Virginia. Well, the knees may be knocking a little bit here this evening. It's his first ever appearance in the championship round. And he told me already he's a touch nervous for this one. And Jeff has made a major change in his lifestyle. Namely, he's lost 75 pounds in the last year. And it's really paid off because he's bowling extremely well. This year, he's won two regionals. And just recently, he won a regional in Indianapolis. And it's the same one that Jeff Lizzie, who won this tournament last year, won. And the two of them together think maybe there's something cooking here. And uh, German could be the guy to look out for. After a brilliant season in 1988, many of the experts felt that Mark Williams was going to become the next superstar on the PBA National Tour. It hasn't panned out that way because his last win was 1988. And that win was the Tournament of Champions. And it really is a mystery to me and many others why Mark Williams hasn't done better. He always has the reputation as being extremely tough in the clutch, Mr. Cool. Maybe it's something to do with the resin balls that are out nowadays. I don't know, but he only has to win two games tonight to get back into that victory column. Our top seed, Brian Voss, averaged a blistering 244 last night. He moved from fifth to first place, and he would absolutely love to win this tournament here this evening. Well, he's had an outstanding year this year. He has four second-place finishes. He's finished in the top ten nine times. He won a title earlier in Riverside, marking the seventh consecutive year that he's won a title. Winning tonight would just cap off an outstanding year. All right, sit back, settle in. We're ready for the start of match number one here from Brunswick Deer Park Lanes in the Brunswick Memorial World Open featuring Richard Wolf and veteran Dave Husted. <laughs> Great event. Excellent top five. A couple of lefties, three right-handers, a, a nice mixture this evening. And we get a look at uh, Rich Wolf. Haven't seen him in quite a while. He'll be playing the extreme outside angle, as they used to say. Using a reactive resin ball that hooks quite a bit. The lane's been tight all week long. Championship pair, 23 and 24, and Richard with a break in the opening frame. And just a little nerves on that shot, Dan. He cut it short and definitely made sure it didn't go in the channel. He's playing right next to it. Got nine. She could have a relatively easy spare at the forefin. Throughout the week, the majority, I think, of the successful left-handed players played the extreme outside angle. The righties, I think, had a an opportunity to shop a little bit. They could play uh, second arrow, third arrow. Uh, they had a couple of different angles well, to choose from. And I was told that, that the first three days of the week they played in, and the next two days they played out. So uh, things change sometimes. Yeah. Things change every day on the PBA Tour. Dave Houston locked in on lane 24, at least in practice, opens up with a strike. Dave Houston always been a very stylish bowler. Holds the ball right at waist high. He's a five-step player. He's going to step. Now he pushes the ball out to a nice free swing. Kind of just glides up there. As he hits the pivot step, you see how high that backswing is. 
Now watch him drive right through with a nice long slide on balance. Can't do it much better than that. Looking for the opening double. And that's about as solid as you're going to get for two frames. Picture perfect strikes. Out of Arlington, Virginia, Richard Wolf averaged 218 on this pair of lanes. He mentioned last night, 178, 178 his final two games and made the show by just 19 pins over Mike Miller. Yeah, he was um, sliding down that rope a little bit, Danny, and it was pretty slippery, but uh, barely got there. Rich is a power player from the left side. Holds the ball again at waist high. Five-step player like Houston. Pushes it a little later here. Now when he hits the next to last step, so he keeps going in here. Right there, there's the swing. Drives through with a nice long slide. Right on balance. You wonder why he doesn't do better. Trying to come back with a double, and he does. Boy, two beautiful shots. And he seems very relaxed tonight. Uh, loose, and maybe it's a relief to get on the telecast, you know, uh, that that was the hurdle he needed to climb. But he's got a tough opponent here. Well, at the beginning of the week, that's the goal of all the players, isn't it? Just to finish in the final five? Oh, yeah, it means so much. It's an opportunity to win the tournament. Uh, there's incentive opportunities for them. As Dave leaves the flush four pin, just a pinch high. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, you, you start off in, in segments of your goal. You want to cash, make sure you cash first, then you want to make the, the top 24, and then, of course, you want to make the top five, and, of course, winning is the ultimate goal. Houston's been competing on the national tour for 15 years. I had a chance to talk to David a little bit prior to the show tonight, and he mentioned that next year would probably be his last full-time year. He's going to start pairing the schedule a little bit. Of course, he and his dad are involved in bowling centers in Milwaukee, Oregon, the Portland, Oregon area. And it's uh, time to kind of move off full-time on See, the national tour. When I look at that age, 33, I remember when he came out at 18. Saw him up in Reno. Sure, national TV. tournament. Yeah, right. 15 years on the road, though. That'll put some miles on him. Went a little wide on the right hand, or I should say the left-hand lane, and misses the pocket for the first time. Leaves only the two-pin, though. Relatively easy spare. Again, uh, he switches balls to go straighter at the spare. That's the whole idea behind it. Just throw right at those spares. Hit it flush. Rich Wolf, two pin lead. All right, we'll take a break here. Come back for more of the Brunswick Memorial World Open. You're about to see the power of subliminal advertising. Now, can you name bowling's hookingest and bashingest ball? It's the Rhino Pro Line in several distinctive urethane formulations to improve any game only at your local pro shop. The story of Jack the Great Pumpkin King and four cool new watches at Burger King. To get a watch for a buck ninety-nine from the everyday value menu order each time. New lower prices on food that's delicious and see Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Four watches to choose from isn't that fine. Each one is different for one ninety-nine. Watches from Burger King, just one more case of everyday value. I love this place. The championship round finals of the Brunswick Memorial World Open are being brought to you by Brunswick. Bowling is sold on Brunswick. And by Burger King, where you can always get it your way, right away. I love this place. And Richard Wolf would love a three-bagger. He seems very relaxed. We see that his earnings are not too impressive the last uh, couple of years, but boy, 45,000 added to that 15 would make it a nice year. Yeah. Ooh, gave that much room. He just bounced back. Roaring didn't back. Well, like I said, I've never seen him this relaxed. Just see that nice long slide. Turn out to maybe the second board. Ball just roars into the one-two flush. Oh, boy, that eight-pin was up there a long time. 
He's looking at it. Ooh, he says. Up by 12, looking to extend that to a 22 pin advantage. Well, that's how he was leading for uh, about three rounds of this tournament. Is his mom and dad think it's great? Hey, Frank's pumped up. He may shoe it up later. Looks intense there, doesn't he? He's ready. David trying to get back on track. And this one runs a little high. Something, ha something happened to distract his concentration, but I'm not exactly sure what it was. He's talking to the tournament director, Johnny Campos, about it. Could be uh, we do have a, a screen down there. There's Johnny Campos, our tournament director, uh, with the uh, photographers behind it. Maybe one of them clicked just as he was throwing the ball. I don't know, but uh, his speed was less. Somebody was clapping, I guess, for what it was. Maybe a touch early, even before he had released the ball. Fans are cautioned prior to the telecast to cheer as much as you want after the ball is gone. I know when we were taping the tip beforehand, Johnny Petragli was throwing a shot in the middle of one of the shots. He threw somebody blew their nose and caught him right. <laughs> and David just uh, whistles that five pin out of there, but something has definitely distracted him. He's laughing about it, but I don't think he's really that happy about it. Well, as loose as he is, he's just trying to forget it. Kevin Shippey, the PBA's public relations department, has kind of uh, given the audience uh, a bit of a warning. And somebody's clapping prematurely. Uh, Johnny Campos goes through a little uh, routine earlier to tell him when to clap and when not to. Could be Frank Wool. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Frank only a joke and uh, as rich wolf uh, made sure that that one didn't go high gave it the trust shot but it came in light leaves the uh, six pin there brings well, up an interesting point uh, how much did you hear in your heyday when you were really focused like at the tournament of champions or one of those big events did you ever hear what was going on around you no Denny, i never did my wife was it because you were hard of hearing no and my wife would say to me did you hear that baby cry or something like that and i'd say what baby <laughs> Okay. But, you know, not every player has the ability to do that. And, and it's different at different stages of the match or the night or whatever. I mean, when you're really into it, you know, it's like uh, they talk about Jack Nicholas's concentration. When he was really into it, he never saw the fly on the ball as he was ready to putt. When the concentration wasn't so great, he waved the fly off of it. Husted down by 22, but he's on a strike. That's the good news. He's got to regroup. I mean, he, things are a little disoriented for him right now. Richard Wolf, Hi. Apply a little pressure. Can't quite get the job done. See, that's a, a reaction to the shot he just threw. He gave it room. The shot before didn't make it back. The tendency all of us have is to just pinch it up there a little bit where he is at. If he tugs it aboard, it's definitely going high. Well, you mentioned the word high before the ball was at the arrows. Well, I could see the trajectory was just headed high right away. That's a trouble, too. Turned immediately and an open frame for Richard Wolf, an open opportunity for Dave Husted. When we come back, he was down by 22. After the miss, Husted leads by eight. When we come back, the conclusion of the opening game here at Deer Park Lane. Colors and your style. At the Carpet Den. Visit the Carpet Den, and you can choose from our wide variety of quality carpets. At the Carpet Den, we also have wood and vinyl floor coverage, plus a beautiful array of window treatments, decorative wallpapers, and a wonderful selection of brand name paints. Yes, you can make any room more beautiful by visiting the Carpet Den in Elizabethtown, your total redecorating center. Lilac City Tournament plans to pay over $1 million this year. Bowl and have fun in Rochester, New York. Enter the high-paying men's team event. The women's team event. And, and the mixed team, team event. event. Win with the Lilac. There, there are 18 great, great events, events, including doubles and singles for, for men, men, women, and mixed. We plan to pay out over $1 million. Call 1-800-36-LILAC now. Win with the Lilac. Looks like he means a little business coming up here on Sunday night, 8 p.m., the NFL. 
on ESPN. The Chicago Bears, San Diego Chargers. Bears minus the bridge. Yeah, they let them go as uh, the Browns did Bernie. I'm still brokenhearted. A lot of us fan. are. A lot of us are. Good break for Bernie, though. Yes. As he ended up in Dallas, I'm told. And Dave can end up in the lead with a strike here and snaps that 10 right out of there. How quickly it changes. 22 pins to now he's two pins behind, speaking of Rich Wolf. And Dave Houston, uh, ever the opportunist, a little extra speed, a little extra snap with that wrist. Watch the six pin snap that 10 out of there. You know, in some cases, Mike, coming back from a commercial break is tough, but I think in this case, it allowed David to settle down a little bit, get back into his game. Absolutely. To uh, regroup and get things back in, in focus. Now he can increase it to 12 with a strike here. More than likely will, the way this guy plays. Ooh, solid 10 pin. Ouch, look at that expression on his face. Well, that keeps the match interesting, though. I mean, one pin match with about two frames to go. Watch the six just whistle around the 10 here, Dan. That sweep comes down so fast we can hardly see it, but uh, Dave saw it. Ooh, you rat. It was a major league wince there. You can't throw it any better than that. No, but uh, Richard Wolf now, a little lapse in concentration, feeling the pressure a little bit. Now he finds himself one pin behind. It's his turn to regroup and get back on the uh, strike column. Hey, what was amazing to me, he was 9-14-1 in match play and got to the telecast. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to bounce back. What was that a beauty? Biggest shot of the week coming up for him right here, though, Dan. One pin behind, ninth frame action, can take the lead by nine pins and really put the pressure on Dave Houston. And has room for 245. See, and the best Dave Houston can get is 236 if he strikes it out. So if Rich strikes here, his fate is in his own hands. He trusted it. Pretty shot. Pretty shot. Excellent pressure shot by Richard Wolf, who looks like to me he's trying just to maintain a low key. Yeah. Don't get too excited. Now watch how this just destroys the pins. Five, six, ten is up there. The head pin just demolishes him. He's talking to it. Houston trying for a chance in the ten. Oh, a beautiful shot. Now David takes this thing off the sheet. He's got room for 236. Now it's going to be who can perform in the 10th frame here, Dan. The first strike gets the match virtually even. We could wind up with a tie here. There's a lot of possibilities. Houston with 45 appearances in the championship round. A record of 40 and 38 with a 216 average. Last win, 1990 in Las Vegas. Yep, cash 20 out of 24 events this year. Trying to put the heat on. Did you see that 10 just kind of, he was looking at the 10 all the way. Kind of shakes his head there because he didn't think that was going to carry him. Now, see, that's what drives me crazy. That shot wasn't as good as the other. But it's better because it struck. <laughs> Watch point. that 6 just nudge the 10 out of there. As Billy Waylou used to say years and years ago, it's the uh, tender touch. Strike here now makes Richard Wolf get 2 in the 10th. Ooh, the uh, photographer back there, somebody moving. David's eyes seem to be a lot of, a lot of places now. Now, I tell you what, starting like that in a crucial situation, stopping and starting over and trying to execute is extremely difficult. Got to have this one. Boy, he got a handful. That's a hard Solid 10. 10. Well, it was almost like the best efforts of the night resulted in nothing but 10 pins. Well, it's still a very interesting situation all the way. Sperry's going to wind up with 225. He's going to force Rich Wolf to strike. It counts just enough to make Rich Wolf strike. Houston now left in that precarious position of sitting down on the bench. And hoping for a break. Meanwhile, Rich Wolf just wants to execute first shot in the tent and move on to the next match. And he struck three out of four times on this lane, so he couldn't ask for a better opportunity.
little extra time, Denny. Came off his hand. Pretty nice. Didn't quite get the job done. Ball wouldn't roll up, Michael. Looked like he lost it a touch. Well, that's exactly right. See, when you leave that 2-4-5 like that, you see that his body reaction was that just simply means to me that he didn't quite catch it with the fingers to make it finish that extra half a board or so. Tough game. Solid game for Rich Wolf. Houston put the pressure on him. Richard couldn't quite get the strike in the 10th. When we come back, a special average builder featuring a pair of TBA Hall of Famers, Mr. Durbin and Mr. Petraglia. Just one more strike for a 300 game. For the inside track on your favorite bowlers, become part of the PBA fan club. All fan club members receive the PBA Media Guide and club programs along with your official membership card. Also, for a limited time only, this Millionaire's Club poster is included. So don't wait, call it today. Call 1-800-299-4PBA for your membership in the PBA Fan Club. Watch how fast Dristan Nasal Spray works. What do you smell? I smelled something. I don't, know. I don't know what it was. My nose is very clogged up. I'd like something to clear up that nose. Use Dristan 12-hour nasal spray. It works fast. Now smell. That's an orange. I can breathe now. Dristan nasal spray works fast. Dristan nasal spray. Fast, effective relief. And to treat your cold and flu symptoms, there's a Dristan product that's right for you. Dristan. A family grows. A boy dreams. One day, they'll be ready for college. Life insurance from the Farmers Insurance Group can help send them on their way. Because life insurance can protect your family now while you put money away that will grow for college later on. Farmers Life Insurance. For safety today and security tomorrow. Farmers Insurance Group. For life. Start your NFL Sunday with the show the pros watch. ESPN NFL Game Day. Our pros will get you ready for a day of NFL excitement. ESPN NFL Game Day. Every Sunday at noon Eastern, only on ESPN. In the last number of years, bowling has seen a lot of technological innovations. Maybe the most inventive of all of these has been Brunswick's Bowler Vision. Bowler Vision does a number of different things, which I don't fully understand. But to help us understand, we have someone here that can explain it all to us. He's a member of the Brunswick Staff of Champions. He's a two-time president of the PBA and a member of its Hall of Fame, Johnny Petraglia. John, welcome to ESPN. Thanks, Mike. Good being back. John, explain to us some of the things that Bowler Vision does. Well, Bowler Vision does a lot of great things, Mike. You can actually play games on it. We have games called Full Shot, and you have games that can act just like billiards so that the kids can have fun. But it also has teaching uh, phases to it, uh, things like Bowler Track. And one very important thing, it can show you what you did on your previous shot so that you can correct off that shot. Well, earlier you threw a shot, and we're going to take a look at it, and you're going to explain to us uh, some of the things that happened with this shot and how you adjusted, right? All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> Now, to let the ball go, you can see that it's pretty wide, and it's, and it's missed the head pin, and I've left up the 1-3. Well, explain to us what comes up here. Well, what comes up is there's my current speed, 17.1 miles an hour. I went over the tenth and a half board, and my entry angle, 0 0.8, is basically straight. So I have to adjust off that. Okay, so what kind of adjustment are you going to make? Well, my normal adjustment would be, obviously, I threw the ball a little too hard, and I would want to get my feet a little bit more to the left, and also get my spot a little bit more to the left and maybe slow down a little bit to get the ball up to the pocket because the lane looks like it's tight. Okay, now here's your adjustment. Here's my adjustment. There's what you did before. Oh, this is great. <laughs> well, a little overcorrection there, but right. let's see what it says here. There's what it was that before. Was previous. Now here's current. See, now I've slowed down my speed about seven-tenths of a mile an hour, which I wanted to do, but unfortunately I pulled the ball at the same time. It hit the 11th board, and consequently the ball crossed over going Brooklyn. The 3.4 is the entry angle to show how much sharper it finished in the back end on the previous shot. So 
So now by the end of the day, I can actually go to the desk in my league and ask for a printout to see how well I did that day in speed-wise and accuracy-wise, and it can really help me in my bowling. Okay. Well, you can see, this can really be a tool. I know I could use it. It can tell me if my speed varied during shots. It can tell me if I'm really hitting the target that I'm thinking that I'm hitting. It can do the same thing for you. We'll see you again Monday night, November 15th, from Venice, Florida, where we'll have another Average Builder. Okay, Dave Houston on top in a very close opening match. He threw a key shot in the 10th and wins 225 to 210. When we come back, Jeff German, the youngster against Dave Houston, the vet, here at the Brunswick Memorial World Open. In a Red Roof Inn, you won't find furniture like this fake French armoire. Just a great room that won't cost you an armoire and a leg. Capiche? Next time, hit the roof. Red Roof Inns. Call 1-800-THE-ROOF. I'm 101, and I love a kid's cereal. Brave adults challenge the notion that Kellogg's Frosted Flakes are just for kids. I say they're for my grandson, but he's 62. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great! Imagine a cold medication so effective, one tablet keeps symptoms from coming back a full 24 hours. Introducing Effidac 24, the first cold tablet for consistent 24-hour relief. Look, Sudafed drops off after six hours. Tavis D after 12. So your symptoms keep coming back. But just one Effidac gives consistent relief for 24 hours. So your symptoms don't come back. New 24-hour Effidac keeps cold symptoms from coming back. Radio Shack, we've always made the latest technology easy to understand for your family. And now our CD-ROM computers make it easy to bring entire libraries to life. Experience the power of Tandy Multimedia Computers. Only at Radio Shack. Jeff Kerman, Dave Husted, set to go in match number two. And uh, for those of you who have visited Europe any time in the last couple of years, and you've had an opportunity to watch ESPN Bowling. This gentleman to my right here, Herbert Bickel, is the uh, the voice of Eurosports in Germany. And uh, he is on hand to watch the World Open this week and uh, decided to stop up. And so we thought it might be a good idea to have him come on the show. Herbert, welcome. Thank you, Denny. Tell us about uh, bowling over there in Europe, especially in Germany. We had the Pro Tour from 1990 to 1992 on TV in Germany, and the people loved it. But we got some problems in 1993, so I tried to get it back, the tour, in 1994. And this is my first tournament live, watching the superstars from the United States. So I'm very excited to watch this final. You know, it has to be tough for you to try and paraphrase what Mr. Durbin and I talk about each and every week, because a lot of people, well, they've, they've told us through the years that we don't even know what we're talking about. Now Jeff Kerman's first shot. Ooh. <laughs> the one, three, six, four, seven. All he can do is smile and hope for the best at this point. Well, at least he doesn't lose any count right now. If he can get it across, it's a makeable washout. Talk about nervous. He was so excited to get to the telecast. Standing comeback shot, Mike Gerben, uh, under any circumstance. I'll tell you what, you know, it, it's a tough washout split because many times as he goes across the head pin here, the head pin will go around the four, but he covers this absolutely perfectly. And that will loosen him up a little bit, his reaction. I think you're exactly right. I look for this to be a pretty good shot here on the left-hand lane. Playing that extreme outside angle. Oh, no, not the swish in 7-10. Boy, he's had an early wake-up call in this match. <laughs> Man. Right in the pocket, leaves the old pocket 7-10. He'll throw hard at one of them. Remember, Jeff Stayrook, uh, another left-hander, made it one time. Uh, where was that, Tucson, Denny? Yep. Hard and straight. Ooh, kicked out momentarily. Herbert, what about uh, the popularity of bowling in Europe, and especially in Germany? Is it a sport that's on the rise? Well, we have a little boom in the last two years because of the coverage of PBA Tour. 
And I think now there are more than 50,000 bowlers at tournament and I think about three or four million who bowl in the centers all the week. And each and every year you have a very large tournament there as well that attracts players from all over the world. That's right. It's called the Golden Bowling Ball Tournament in Frankfurt and we had some pros over there. Earl Anthony, Randy Peterson was there years ago. Okay, it's been tough for you because you're speaking in English. What I'm going to let you do now on this next shot is describe to our German-speaking viewers out there across the United States what Dave Husted is going to do here on the left-hand lane. So you want to have me to talk German? Sure. No? Okay. It's easy, a great ball, a good ball from Dave Husted here in this frame and he goes with the Führung. German nach dem offenen Frame im zweiten nun unter Druck und er ist der Außenseiter in diesem Match, der Rookie und wir werden sehen, ob er seine Nervosität hier ablegen kann, um wieder ins Match zurückzukommen. Mike, did you get all that? Yeah, I understood every word, Dan. He said, Jeff Gerben better strike on this ball. <laughs> As he comes in with the old light bucket clubber, watch the head pin just clip the three and the seven. Boy, he had a lot of pins laying on that deck. Down by 11, but the scenario could change if the youngster strikes here on the other lane. And sometimes to get that first double is the major hurdle to get over, Dan. Needs it badly for a confidence builder. Oh. And threw a very nice shot. At least this time he got the 10 pin. Did out. you see how relaxed he threw that shot? I mean, he caught all of that one. Just a bad break leaving the 7 pin. Herbert, I know you've had a chance to watch firsthand, as you mentioned, the superstars in bowling. Uh, what are your impressions of watching the greatest players in the world this week? Oh, they performed very well, I think. Tough lanes, as the guys from PBA told me. But I saw Brian Falls last night. And unbelievable for me. Average 244. This is really great. But the others too, they've used it. He came from behind. Well, who knows? Perhaps someday basketball is moving internationally. Football is as well. Maybe we'll have PBA events over in Germany before it's all over. We tried to do so, Danny. We tried to do to get a little bit more bowling on TV, especially PBA, but also seniors too and the LPBT. And we tried to do our best to get our own tour in Germany and in Europe. Are there many top flight German players at the professional level that could come over here and compete? We have already one who's competing with the pros, name is Peter Knopp. Oh, sure. He's a... Uh... Dave, 21 pins ahead, trying to increase it to 31 and does. So Peter's playing over here now? Peter's or he has. playing over here now, but he didn't get the cut to the top 60 now. Well, be kind to us the next time you you try and do one of our shows over there. Of course, Mike and I work together, but you work by yourself when you do the translations. That's right. I have to do the, my by my own. You get paid twice as much? <laughs> that would be great, <laughs> but I don't think so. When do you go back home? We leave tomorrow. We won't watch the final, and then we leave tomorrow. Good shot there by Jeff German in the fifth. And, uh, Herbert, we want to thank you for stopping by. Please feel free to stay for the rest of the show here. And uh, one day, maybe Michael and I will make it over there. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. Jeff Gurman trying to get something done here. And he better start right now, Dan. Better start right now. And does. Oh, he's fired up. Houston is leading. Gurman trying to figure out how to slide past that... Dave Houston, when we come back, the conclusion of our second match. If you're really into Nintendo, you'll flip for Domino's Pizza's $25 million Super Mario All-Star Instant Win Game. With every Domino's order, get a free Instant Win Game card. A chance to win thousands of special power set prizes from Domino's like Super NES, Game Boy System, and the new Super Mario All-Star Game. And now, buy our new crunchy Thin Crust Pizza and get free Twisty Bread. So, if you're into Nintendo and great pizza, call Domino's for... Something for nothing when you call Domino's. Driver, do you have any Bud Light in your vehicle? 
Yes. And I am Mr. Gally Weekich. You mean Dr. Galakowicz? Yes, I am. This is so cool. First time in a limo? Doctor? In a limo this small. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. The Flyers. The Penguins. Eric Lindros and the Flyers face the Penguins. Tuesday, live on ESPN National Hockey Night. CFA College Football coming your way on Saturday beginning at 12.30 a Big Ten battle. Michigan has made 18 consecutive trips to postseason play and they're going to have to win their last two against Minnesota and Ohio State to get a bowl bid more than likely. And then of course Louisville who has already accepted a bid to the Liberty Bowl will take on Texas A&M. Texas A&M with the longest current winning streak in the Southwestern Conference in conference games. Jeff German two big shots coming up here 17 pins behind can knock it right down to seven it's just a roll up and strike and it rolls up and splits just soft with the speed then came off the hand just a little quick again and soft with that speed as you and i have talked about so often the first trip on tv you feel like you're throwing the ball a little bit harder than you actually are Had an opportunity to talk to Jeff prior to the telecast here this evening and ask him about his first ever appearance on national television. Well, Denny, uh, it's been a real interesting week. Uh, I'm really nervous, truthfully. Uh, just want to make it through and uh, hopefully win. You never know what might happen. Are you surprised at your success? You've had a seventh place finish, several top 24 finishes, but are you surprised that you made it to the championship round here in this prestigious event? Uh, truthfully, yeah. Uh, it's it's been a week it's been like a dream i went through a lot of changes this year uh got in a car wreck hurt my back i've lost 75 pounds this first year and it's just it's been a lot of changes and it's it's really good to see some hard work pay off great shot there solid eight stands that's the worst break of the week he mentioned a lot of changes he was also married earlier this year his lovely wife christy is on hand so yeah this has been a, a transition year for that guy there she is right now trying to smile but she's probably feeling yeah. desperate well you know when you're up against a veteran a 15-year veteran like dave houston your first time out and he's uh, got pins coming from the back kicking out the four it's uh, hard to do well a prayerful expression by dave houston after tripping the four let's see what hits that four pin It came around the back. I pin. guess it was no, it was a two pin. I think it was a two pin. You came think? all the way around. Yeah. I thought it was a head pin. I thought it slapped into the four and came back around. Wow. Nevertheless, nice break. Very nice. Which you probably take advantage of. Yes. Don't they always? Yeah. <laughs> That's what Jeff's saying to himself yeah. right now. Well, yeah, we've all been in that situation. But if you if you've competed in this sport, you know what it's like to sit on the receiving end of that. Jeff can uh, take this off the sheet for a 203 game, and that's going to come up short, though. The good news is, without question, this will be the largest check of his PBA career. Light hit after going through the nose, and that gentleman right there has done a tremendous amount for the sport of bowling. Jack Reichert, the chairman and CEO of Brunswick Corporation. Was leading a major campaign to get bowling into the Olympics. Uh, that hasn't uh, happened on the medal sport yet. Still in the process of trying to get that done. It's a battle. It sure is. If they ever let us in, they'll be surprised. A bit solemn. Well, still proud of him, though. Sure. Whoops. Well, he's just burying his speeds too much, Dan. You, you, in a situation like this and under the pressure of the TV lights, you, you vary that speed and that ball. I mean, if you were using the bowler vision, <laughs> they could show him going from, you know, 17 to 15 or whatever. And you just can't vary that much in the speed. But the good thing is, too, you get an opportunity to go back and watch the telecast and you watch and think about the shots that you made. And uh, it's a learning experience. Second time this young guy has come up with a marvelous shot, and he's 
provided a few thrills here tonight, <laughs> not anything else. I'll tell you what, these fives and sixes that he makes into spares as he has the uh, two, four, six, ten here. It shows us exactly how to make it perfectly. Earlier he made the washout. He just left a few too many designs here in this one tonight. There's a perfect strike. So Jeff German congratulates Dave Newstead, and David knows very well what it feels like the first time around, and uh, we're going to see more of that young man. He has a lot of talent. And David now is dispatched of uh, both of the left-handers in our top five, and he has to take on a right-hander now. Mark Williams will be up next. That's too, er, too tight, David. I wonder if he was shopping a bit on that toss. I don't think he was shopping. I think he's just going through the motions on that shot. I mean, uh, really didn't uh, care that much. Leaves the three, six, nine, ten. Ten thousand dollars richer. That'll help soothe the disappointment, but probably not that much. Odd way to make the Durbin. Three, six, nine, ten. He's practicing for the pocket. That's all. You think he was? No. <laughs> no, I don't. So that puzzled look on his face. He, he's really confused on that shot. All right. When we come back, we'll take a quick look at a wonderful dinner that's held each and every year for all of those participating in the Brunswick Memorial World Open. And I'm Frank. We started the Lilac City Tournament 26 years ago. And we plan to pay over $1 million in the 94 Lilac. There's great team events for men, women, and mix. And the Lilac has doubles and singles events. So bowl in Rochester, New York at the Lilac. With 18 great events, any bowler with a league average can win in the Lilac. Call 1-800-36-LILAC for all the details. Bowl in Rochester. You could be one of our big winners in the Lilac City Tournament. For the 11th consecutive year, tournament week at the Brunswick Memorial World Open kicked off with a gala reception and dinner for 250 guests at the Palmer House in downtown Chicago. As one of the premier events in bowling, the global theme of the tournament is featured with a tremendous selection of food from the countries of all 20 of the international players in the event. Each of the members of the international field were recognized for their accomplishments, and the evening's festivities also included a tribute to the tournament honorees. This year's recipients being longtime professionals in the media, Bowler's Journal publisher Mort Luby Jr. and the 10-pin tattler Sam Weinstein received their coveted awards before the tournament began the following day. All right, final score, 216 to 177. Dave Husted, a big winner, and uh, we've also got some interesting news here from one of the international players that competed this week. Twenty international bowlers competed this week, and Takeo Sakai of Japan was the best of the bunch, finishing 12th. But through his interpreter, he told us that it wasn't quite good enough. He is happy and winning in the international, and since they are a lot of uh, strong player. But uh, he was looking forward to getting a, you know, good chance to get on the top five. And uh, then gradually he's going downhill towards the end, and uh, he's very, very disappointed for that. And he'll come back for strong, he said, for next time. All right, when we come back, Dave Houston, Mark Williams. This should be an excellent semifinal match for the rights to take on our top seed this week, Ryan Voss. How does your Genie screwdrive door opener work? Push the button on the garage and the door opens just like that. As opposed to a chain, and if you've ever seen a chain on a bicycle, you'll know that a jerk, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Genie screwdriver, built for a lifetime. Hurry, girls, before Daddy gets up. Ooh, we're ready. Hmm. Now, no more. These are Daddy's corn pops. Oh, look. Daddy's bowl is too full. The problem with a cereal that tastes like popcorn, only sweeter, mm. is that it disappears mm. like popcorn, only faster. Mommy, that's Daddy. We share. Hi, girls. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Now let's all go make him breakfast. <laughs> Kellogg's Corn Pops. It's hard to stop when it's Pops. Let's 
Bud Light proudly presents George Strait. All pro quarterback Dan Marino. When the game is over and the pain starts, I want two things for my pain relieving rub fast relief and no odor. So I use Sports Cream, a strong pain relieving rub that doesn't make me smell like a medicine chest. I just massage in Sports Cream for fast odor free relief. Cream or lotion? Sports Cream sure gets my vote for most valuable pain reliever. Top rank boxing. Kevin Pompey defends his welterweight title against Harold Brazier. Plus, rising heavyweight stars Shannon Briggs and undefeated knockout artist Lou Savarese. Tonight, live on ESPN. All right, Dave Houston, Mark Williams, set to get after it here in the semifinal of the Brunswick Memorial World Open. And uh, we are really blessed this evening, Mike Durbin, because we have one of the true icons in the sport of bowling, <laughs> Sam Weinstein, after 59 years of broadcasting the 10-pin Tattler in That's Chicago, right. is going to spend a couple of frames with us as Houston opens with a solid 10. Welcome to the telecast. Thank you very much, Denny. I admire the job that you and Michael are doing for ESPN. I think it's terrific. What a spokesman, huh? <laughs> you keep going if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. <laughs> now, I want to ask you a couple of questions because you have obviously seen the game from a number of different perspectives, Sam. I mean, I know you're involved in Universal Bowling, your company, but you've done the 10 pin tattler for 59 50, years. Yeah, and I, I started Universal Bowling four years after I went on the air. Wow. And I started 10 pin tattler nine weeks after I graduated from Northwestern University Night School, School of Journalism. So I've been at this now, bowling. I uh, really love the game, as you know, since 1931. That's what, 62 years? Well, in 62 years, did you ever see anybody trip the 4-7 out yet still leave the baby split? <laughs> no, I can't recall that, Mike. <laughs> That's the most unusual hit I've seen in a long time, I'll tell you what. <laughs> the biggest change in the game, Sam, from the days when you watched it 50, 60 years ago to now. Well, the biggest change, the best change, I believe, uh, well, there are two or three changes. One was when the women came into bowling in the middle 30s. And of course, the automatic pin setter that uh, Brunswick came out with uh, in the early 50s. Mm -hmm. What about the bowling equipment, the bowling balls themselves? Well, that's, of course, a phenomenal thing. I don't uh, know whether the bowling ball has all that much to do with the high scores. I think the kids are getting such an early start that they become a lot more proficient, uh, proficient than people of my uh, my uh, generation. So you think the bowlers nowadays are, are superior to the bowler of your generation? I think so. I think they're much uh, more technically involved in the sport. They've done a lot more studying. In better shape? And better. Oh, definitely. Don't forget, Mike, that in my era, the, uh, the star bowler was, uh, was an amateur. He, he didn't pay attention to the bowling uh, as, a, as a sport. It wasn't until the PBA. Junie McMahon? Uh, Junie, of course, was a great bowler. Junie McMahon. Do you go back as far as Junie? No, Mike Durbin told me about him. <laughs> oh, great, great, great goal. Probably the most powerful ball in the, in the sport, uh, Junie McMahon. If you had to pick one bowler over all the 62 years you've been involved with and say that one was the best, could you do it? It would be difficult. Uh, as, as accurate a bowler as, as I've ever seen, of course, was Don Carter and his height. He could really thread the ball. But there's Dick Weber and Earl Anthony and Mike Durbin, as a matter of fact, and even Denny Schreiner, oh, if he ever my. made up his mind to it. Sam, <laughs> Sam. Go ahead, keep going. No, I'm just kidding. All right, you've been doing the show 59 years, so we yeah. can expect another 40 or 50 out of you, right? Well, uh, the good Lord willing, I'm going to keep at it until I get it right, Denny. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you it has to have been fun. Of course, you lived in the Chicago area your whole life, but this is such a great championship. The, the World Open, and, and this year, of course, you're honored uh, at the, the dinner, and of course, for the entire week, has to be a thrill for you. It, it really is, and I'm so grateful to the entire Brunswick Corporation, Jack Reichert, the CEO, the new president, Jack Riley, and 
they've just got a wonderful group working for them, and uh, I just hope they continue for the next 150 years. Brunswick is about 150 years old now, you know. And, of course, for the terms of the honorees, it was a basically a Chicago sweep. Your good buddy, Mort Luby Jr., oh, and, of Mort course, Luby the Jr. publisher of the Bowler's Journal was the other man this Mort year that Luby, was on it. Mort uh, Sr. is the man uh, that gave me my big break. I worked, started to work for Mort Luby Sr. in 1931, and Mort uh, Luby Jr. was at that time four months old, so you, we, can, we can always tell Mort how old he is. <laughs> <laughs> you got first-hand experience there. Yeah. Uh, Match right now, even Steven after three frames. And there's Mort Luby there's Jr. Mort Luby Jr. So does he look like his dad? Oh, he's uh, perhaps better looking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, there was a wonderful family there. Mort Luby Sr. and his wife, Fritzy. And then, of course, Mort Jr. came along in uh, July of 31. Great to have you on hand. Thanks so much for, well, for stopping by. God bless and keep going with that 10-pin tackle. Mike uh, or Denny, that's very kind of you. And Mike, thank you. And just keep up this top job. Uh, you're a great asset to the game of bowling. Thank you. We'll do our best. Thank you. Sam Weinstein, the 10-pin tattler here in the greater Chicago area as Mark Williams spares up. So far on the left lane, Mark Williams has left a solid, uh, I believe, 9-pin and solid 10-pin. So he's beginning to think it doesn't pay to hit flush on that lane. Houston now can take an early lead by doubling up on a lane that's given him a little trouble recently. Looked to me like he moved a little deeper with oh, the feet and the angle. Definitely, as we see Jack Riley, the uh, Brunswick president of the Brunswick Corporation. We can see as uh, we take a replay of this, uh, David moving closer to the fourth arrow now. He started off close to the third. The lanes are breaking down quickly. He's making the adjustments, and that's how you win games. Looking for a three-bagger and a 20-pin lead. He's just cruising right through here. A player with a, just a great deal of experience and composure in the championship round. There you see a little fire from Houston, letting Williams know, hey, I'm locked in now on this pair of lanes. You're going to have to make some serious shots to catch me. Absolutely. That's a just what he communicated to him you know and people know that Dave is not a demonstrative type guy so when he gets that kind of reaction they're thinking oh, oh he's really locked in now this man here can throw strikes with the best of them when he figures out a pair of lanes spins it out there trips out to 10 and then a late seven pin so a strike up for Mark Williams and he'll look for a double here in the sixth and Mark coming in from that outside angle might have an opportunity for what we would call some messenger strikes and I've been on told that we had a number of those during the week where those pins, the head pin would just fly off the wall and come back and get to either the 7 or the 10. Needs to get one of those messages going through right now to cut this lead down to 10 pins. Needed some help and didn't quite get it. Mark's dad is looking on tonight. Wayne looks like a might be a touch nervous. Well, he really thought that was going to strike, didn't he? He looks like uh, Mark's brother, Derek. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, he did think that was going to strike. I mean, he's made three quality strike shots on the left lane and, and no strikes. Happens a lot out here. Mark Williams trying to figure out the puzzle of lane 30, uh, 23. Meanwhile, Dave Husted locked in right now. And we'll be back with a conclusion after this. You build a new razor with precision heads to shave below the skin in comfort. And what do you get? Cut a precision groove to help the Norelco lift and cut system shave even closer. And what do you get? Build a razor that shaves closer, smoother than ever before. And what do you get? The new Norelco razors. Our closest shave ever. story of Jack the Great Pumpkin King and four cool new watches at Burger King. To get a watch for a buck ninety-nine from the everyday value menu order each time. New lower prices on food that's delicious and see Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Four watches to choose from isn't that fine. Each one is different for one ninety-nine. Watches from Burger King, just one more case of everyday value. I love this place. All right, don't forget the MNI PBA Senior Championship. That's right, the seniors are 
Going to shoe it up and finish out a strong 93 season down at Galaxy Lanes in Venice, Florida. Keep in mind, it's a special night, Monday, November 15th, airtime, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Dickinson, Handegard, Persina, Stuss, Weber, Semez. Oh, they're all fighting it out because that's a big-time tournament down there. The seniors all want to win that one. And that one could determine PBA Senior Player of the Year. Well, I think it will. Eustead back to work on a three-bagger, looking to put some serious heat on Mark Williams. Well, I'll tell you what, there's no swing area. You send it right a little bit. And David kind of got the swing a little going wobbly that time. It's a little wild. And he sent it right just a little bit. Leaves the 2-8. Watch it. Lifted it, sent it just, you know, a little wide. And really is fortunate to come away with just a 2-8, which is a tough spare. That's why hooked right at the end, and boy, I'll tell you what, Rich Wolf in the first match, a comfortable lead, opened, and gave an opportunity to his opponent, Dave Houston. Now Dave opens and gives the opportunity to Mark Williams. See how quick Williams jumped from one chair to the other? He was ready to get up there and bowl right now. Oh, he's a competitor. You know, uh, he's a real competitor. Suddenly this match goes, you know, it could have been almost put away as a six-pin match. David has to shake that off, regroup, and uh, put the ball back in the 1-3. down there. I don't know whether that's going over the, the finger holes or the thumb. I'm not sure. But uh, a couple shots in a row there that I hadn't heard that before. See how he has that left arm and how that left arm snaps back as he lets it go. Kind of like Walter A. Williams Jr. Man, that's the second one of the match. These power balls are no, the pins are no match for these balls, Denny. They just finish right through. That's two solid nines. German left with at least, what, one solid uh, eight? Richard Wolf leaves something? Maybe not. That's back in the dead zone, I don't remember. So I think it was a solid eight, and I, I know for sure. All right, we'll take a look back. Look at that swing, how he has to realign that swing. Boy, that's hard to do. But watch this ball finish and take the nine, or the five, right straight off that nine. Man, that's just, wow. At that point in time, Mark almost bit right through his tongue. You know, he's got shots in the pocket from the second all the way through the seventh frame, and only has two strikes to show for it, but he's only down seven pins in the match. He's right there. Out of Beaumont, Texas. Beautiful strike, and all Williams has to keep thinking to himself is, is man, if I could just carry a little bit, I'd be ahead in this match. You'd think that, but you also, those negative thoughts come if I just can get a break, you know? Mm -hmm. And I've been informed by Larry Lichstein, as we can see the, the oil ring a little bit on Dave Houston's ball right there. You see that, that it is clipping the finger hole. That one didn't. Ooh, and he crunched that four, that two, just clipped the four as it went around at that time, Dan. Just nicked it. Watch it. Watch the two pin. Third from the left. It's going to go high. And you, so quick you couldn't see it, but it just clipped the four. He saw it, and that's a beautiful sight to a right-handed player. Oh, yeah, when it falls like that. Now, again, we get to the ninth frame. 17 pins the difference. He can really put the pressure on Mark Williams. This is really his better of the two lanes. Stretched out with it. Oh, he reached all the way and, whoa, a little extracurricular look down there at lane 23. Well, hey, you win this match, you're bowling for the title. And at $45,000. Puts him up 27 pins and makes this a must strike right here for, by Mark Williams. He's got to get his first double right now. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe how that could leave a 10 pin. Neither does he, and neither does Dad. He's disgruntled, and I don't blame him. I would be, too. I mean, that was, the 7 pin was up there for a split second. He had the 7 and the 10 up there for a split, and it was just high flush. Some weird pin action by Mark Williams, but he's going to go home a loser in this match. Newstead could shoot 245, and Mark Williams has done nothing but label the pocket since the first frame, and he's got to throw a double to shoot 200. Let's watch this pin action. See, that's high flush, Dan. 
The three hits the six. The six goes in front of the ten. Did you see it went left of the ten? What a weird pin reaction that time. Were they on spot? Yeah, I think they were on spot. It's, it has something to do with these power balls and the fast pin reaction. That was really strange. Nothing but pocket hits for Mark Williams, who will still be looking for that first title since 1988 as he leaves a solid 10 on the left hand lane. There's the wave, please. Don't, no, don't, don't go down now, now. please. No, just stand right where you are. Don't give me a break now. I don't need it now. I'm out of the match. Right. <laughs> All positive things. Oh, that saying, my, that is oh, tough. It is tough. It is hard. It's like hitting it in there six feet, four or five holes in a row, and just lifting out every birdie putt. All Mark can do is smile a little bit and say, oh, some days it happens, and other days it doesn't. You hear the expression a lot of times in a lot of different sports, is I or V just couldn't get anything going. And that, as he finishes off with a solid seven, he went right through the entire gamut. Did you say, probably a Mark saying, well, I got the 10, I got the 9, I got the 8, or whatever, I got the 7, I got them all in one game, which is uh, apropos. How did I get three strikes? Dinner bucket left on the right-hand lane. And this one is over and done, so we'll take a break here from Brunswick Deer Park Lanes in Lake Zurich, Illinois. Houston, a winner in the semifinal. Don't forget the weekend kickoff show tomorrow at 7.40. If you think this is a broad selection of tires, wait till you go to Pep Boys. $10 rebate on any Futura. Come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. At Radio Shack, we've always made the latest technology easy to understand for your family. Now our CD-ROM computers make it easy to bring entire libraries to life. Experience the power of Tandy Multimedia Computers. Only at Radio Shack. In your quest to master the perfect bowling score, Is the new power torque. It's beyond reactive. Columbia holds the world over. The 3M filter clean air filter gets more of the small stuff that's in your air out. Stuff an ordinary furnace and air conditioner filter would miss. Like more of the dust. More of the pollen and mold. More of these particles that could irritate your allergies. It even gets more animal dander. Try the filter clean air filter. It gets more of the aggravating things in your air out. <coughs> even smoke. Look for the 3M filtry clean air filter wherever you buy furnace or air conditioner filters. I'm 101 and I love a kid cereal. Brave adults challenge the notion that Kellogg's Frosted Flakes are just for kids. I say they're for my grandson, but he's 62. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great! Time now for Championship Frame. And let's move on to match number one. It was Richard Wolf, and he was looking for a strike in the 10th. It was in his uh, ballpark, so to speak, or in his court. If he strikes, he wins. If he doesn't strike, he loses. And he just didn't catch it all with the fingers. It didn't finish. Three, five, six, and Richard Wolf was rooted on, but uh, to no avail. Couldn't quite get it back to the pocket, so Houston survived the opening match. A good close match, 225-210. On to game number two. This time it was Dave Houston looking for a double in the ninth. And basically he was in command the entire match as he faced a somewhat nervous Jeff German. Dave, uh, the favorite lane has been the left lane. He's gotten a lot of these, Dan. Bang. Made him disappear. A key double in the ninth. Kept the pressure on and he won 216-177. History did repeat itself here this evening. Let's go to game number three. Houston again with a double in the ninth. And he had a little more trouble this match as he ran into a Mark Williams that could not carry. Really gave this the extension. A little more side turn. Watch it dice those pins up there. That led to victory. 
His reaction? Oh, my goodness. He was pumped. He wanted to get to the title match, which is what he's done. And some of our other finishers here. I mean, we've jumped into 18 and 19. <laughs> Brian Voss uh, getting ready to throw his practice shots here prior to the title game. Dave Houston trying to relax a little bit. And we'll be back with the title match from Brunswick Deer Park Lanes in the Brunswick Memorial World Open after these messages. You're about to see the power of subliminal advertising. Now, can you name bowling's hookingest and bashingest ball? It's the Rhino Pro Line in several distinctive urethane formulations to improve any game only at your local pro shop. Is this space taken? No. Then I'll sit down. You want a Bud Light? Not yet. Hey, hey, wait a minute! That's my Bud Light! If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. How about a little help here? <clears throat> you can still fly with Michael Jordan. All the excitement of the Jordan career is captured in this exclusive collection, the Michael Jordan Thrill Bath. Free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, the magazine that gets you into sports like no one else. The Thrill Pack includes two free videos, Come Fly With Me 91 and Michael Jordan Airtime. Come fly with Michael to his early days in North Carolina and stay way up with the NBA and the original slam and jam and excitement. In Airtime, you go behind the scenes to see what it's like to be Michael Jordan as his championship dreams come true. Your Thrill Pack also includes this special collector's edition of Sports Illustrated. It's full-color excitement celebrating three seasons at the top. Get 54 issues of Sports Illustrated for only $1.39 an issue. Save over 52% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Don't miss this big three-pack Thrill Pack. It's the only way to fly. There is nothing in the world like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. Mike Miller missed by just 19 pins in seventh place this week, Doug Kent. And in eighth place, uh, Parker Bowen we saw last week, and Norm Duke, a winner earlier this fall. Rounding out the top ten, Ken Moscato and Joe Furpo, a finalist last week. Takeo Sakai from Japan and John Schatz. Tommy Deletz Jr. and Ryan Schaefer, 15. Del Ballard with a nice beard, and Danny Wiseman, haven't seen him in a while. 18th place, Bob Learn Jr. and Dave Ferraro, number 19. In 20th, Wayne Webb and Billy Oaks in 21st. 22nd place, the current national amateur champion, Robert Smith and Marshall Holman, the great Hall of Famer, 23rd. Eugene McHugh was 24th, and of course our alternate was Adam Apo. All right, down to the final match. Dave Fustad, Brian Voss, $45,000 and a beautiful Bayliner Jazz jet boat with motor and trailer package. That's what they're shooting for. And we can see that uh, Houston has struck more on 23 than 24 as he opens up with a 10-pin. And Brian Voss, uh, showing the intelligence that he possesses, has decided to make Houston finish on lane 24. Kind of a soft 10 with the opening shot. Well, you know, the last few frames, uh, Houston has struggled a little, bit, a little bit on lane 24. As Voss doesn't even look at him. <laughs> Choosing not to see the good or the bad breaks of an opponent. Uh, we all approach it different ways, and Brian's uh, approach is that way. He looks a little uptight right here now, but he's an intense competitor. He gets himself ready very well. Oh, that's the way you like to open a title match when you're the top seed. Want to come right on out with that strike. Classic style of Brian Voss. He moves that left foot just a little bit, but basically it's a four-step approach. Free arm swing as he hits the pivot step. Perfect position right here. He drives through with a nice long slide on balance, head steady, good follow through. You do teach it that way to everybody. What a 
double and an early lead. Did you see the follow through, Dan? Did you see the follow through? The follow through went dead left. He was anxious about that shot, wanted to get off to the early lead, and tried to help it, and as a result, didn't get the lift that he wanted to. 2-4-5 on lane 23. Which has not been an easy spare tonight. Beautiful conversion of the 2 4 5. Dave Houston now see if he can uh, master the right lane. Good shot. All the way. Nice pin reaction with that. Uh, Scrambling hit there, light in the pocket, going to his good lane now. David has just moved up the ladder steadily all the way. A couple of deep breaths, trying to slow down just a touch. Well, it's the biggest game he's bowled in three years. <laughs> Little off balance, but he was down on one knee when it was all over. Clutch double there. See, it, it's in a situation like this so many times, it's like uh, two football teams. The first one that scores has the advantage. The first one that gets that double has the definite advantage. Nice loose swing. Now just a little more direct that time than the other one. Flush 4-7. in his mind. Did he throw that the way he wanted to? It's a hair softer and a little more direct, but what I didn't like was that little shake of the head right there. Did you see that? It just shows me, you know, if I'm watching and I'm the opponent, that he's just not really confident on this pair. <laughs> Brian Voss has a way of, of coming back. Brian averaged just 201 on this pair of lanes throughout the week. That was the lowest of our top five finalists. See, and, and that's running through his mind. You know that. Although he struck at will in practice. I mean, he was striking very a lot in practice. He did experiment with different angles in practice, though maybe because he only averaged uh, 2-0 on this pair during the tournament. Was light the last time? Oh, that was... Just a tremendous effort. Did you see how much looser that swing goes? Thumb came out, and the fingers caught that ball heavy all the way, and it rolled back flush. Big pressure match for both players right here. 12 pins of difference right now, fourth frame action. For three in a row? No. No, 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 no. Right through the nose, and that's a disaster. And there's a good look at Arnie Fogel, and uh, he, of course, is the president of uh, BRC. And we want to mention that the Brunswick Foundation will be donating $15 for every pin knocked down during the finals this evening on ESPN to the Lambs Incorporated of Libertyville, Illinois. <coughs> the Lambs is a private, nonprofit organization which provides vocational, residential, and social support services for mildly and moderately retarded adults. Now, just to keep in mind, after three games, they've knocked down 1,233 pins. That's $18,495. So, it'll probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty-five grand tonight. That's a nice little paycheck. That's sensational. So, just to show you what Brunswick is involved in. Newstead comes back with a nice shot, but knowing Brian Voss the way I do, look for him to jump all over this one. The right lane is, is the key to the match, it appears, for both players. especially for Houston. See those career earnings, uh, that's up there. PBA millionaire. More speed. Oh! Carried the H, a great break. I had a chance to talk to Brian about the passing of his father earlier this year, and it's very much on his mind. 
I tried to do it in Japan about four weeks ago and, and finished second. Uh, but it's, you know, it's been real hard for me. And uh, I know he'd like to see me win this. He's the reason I'm here. He's the reason I, I bowl. Um, so this one would be for him. Trip out to four. Now uh, this match is going to be back and forth then all the way down to the tenth, I think. Uh, that's an emotional situation. I know what the, that's like to go through that, and uh, it's hard. And of course, we all face it sooner or later. Trying to focus up, get the job done. Ah. Trouble. Oh. Did you hear Brian? Oh. He said, hook. Now, how's it going to hook when he's trying to throw it straight? And kill it. I mean, it wasn't going to hook. <laughs> he wanted that ball to grow. <laughs> Expand to yeah. please. Houston oh. has to ignore that and get back into the 1-3 pocket on 24. Big shot coming up for David right here. Left again. Yeah. Just... Uh, you know, when that it gets to the situation with a, a lane den that, that your area is diminishing and you feel like you're in, it becomes so much harder to make a quality shot. Your mind starts playing tricks on you. He leaves the three six nine now, not an easy spare. But he's gotta make it to keep himself close in the match. He's figuring out what he's gonna do to make it right now. Well we watched him miss the two eight. Trying to hook the ball. He's gotta hook it a little bit here, doesn't he? He's got to. He's using the same ball. He hasn't changed balls. Nice cover. <laughs> Sigh of relief. Even the best in the world buckle under the pressure when there's double wood. Well, the good news is he only has to bowl in that lane twice more, but the bad news is that he's not going to get a double in this match unless he strikes over there. See, from my perspective, it, to me, it just doesn't look like he's projecting the ball enough right on that right-hand lane. It looks like he's cutting it off short. Yeah, he is, then, but what's going through his mind is the bucket he left in the 10th frame, and that when he does send it wide, it doesn't come back. This lane, he sends it wide, and he at least gets it back for the half-10 here. He's got all the confidence in the world to strike over here. Now, actually, leaving a 10 pin there situation-wise may be good for him because he'll be a little more relaxed going to the right lane rather than if he were on a strike. That's interesting. I mean, if you're trying to win the match, you'd much rather be on a strike, wouldn't well, you? Absolutely, you would. But, you, you know, you got to string strikes. I mean, it's harder to get that strike when you got to strike up. At least it always was for me. I don't know. My span used to get smaller. <laughs> Brian Voss. Ops for a re-rack on lane 24. Down by 13. Struck the last time on this lane. Now he's He's got a much better shot to the pocket on this right lane than Houston does. He doesn't like this rack either. Going to burn both of them here in the same frame. Well, there they go. <laughs> and he's not even on a strike. Boy, I'd never do that. Evidently, he didn't have a full rack. He's waiting for the pins to come down. Ah. So he still has one left. A little extra time here by both players. A lot at stake. Boy, fiddle with that ball. Gave it room. See, then you, you give it too much, and it's a 2-8, and we've already seen Houston miss his spare. That cuts the lead down to 11. If he misses it, we're basically an, an staring at uh, an even match. Now he's going to approach it, you know, uh, pretty much like he did the 2-4-5 the in the second frame. He's going to go hard and straight at it, I think. We'll see. No, he hooked it at it, Denny. Trouble. Ooh. Look at, Brian. Look at These pros are being reduced to their knees on spares. Got spares. Because the pressure is tremendous in this Boy, I, And it's getting thicker as the frames get later. Watch this. It's going to hit the two pin on the left and still make it, which is, doesn't happen all the time. But see, this is a great PBA scoring condition right here. Medium scores, class game. you got to make the critical shots, and spares are important. See, that's what it's all about. Eighth frame. The good one. Houston looks relaxed. Bet he isn't. Slower with the speed. Oh, that's 
saw that one coming. You could. You, you know, if, if we'd had the bowler vision and the bowler track on that, we could have seen that that was at least a mile per hour slower. And, boy, he broke up nothing. Broke up nothing. Pretty close to target, but he got to have that speed to hold it in the track right through double pinnacle the four six seven ten he's thinking well do i have to go for it he's going to throw hard and straight and hope something good happens wow he, i'll tell you what that could have happened as hard as he hit that suddenly he's behind instead of leading by 13 he's now down by he could shoot 209 he's down by five right now but houston's struggling on the right lane let's see if he gets this one further to the right He did. And guess what? And I'll tell you what, that five pin moved off spot. That two five is separated down there. We got a uh, three pin match right now. If he makes it, he's missed. <laughs> You're right, he's coming down to who can make the spins right now? Who can hang on? These lanes are getting tougher by the minute and the pressure, the money. See that five pin move off a little bit? Just enough to get your attention. I mean, you can chop it when it's on spot. When it's off, it's like a magnet. Switches balls. Hard uh -oh. straight. Oh! Look at this grimace as he turns around. Both these guys right now just trying to hang on by their fingernails. Wow, look at that. This looked like a chop all the way. It, it, he switched balls and it kind of faded at the end. <laughs> Even the audience reacting to the replay. Look at David. Well, if you'd have seen the expression from the other side, it wasn't pretty. Three pins, two frames to go. Who will finish at the foul line? Or at the, <laughs> the whatever. <laughs> the intensity right now. Two great competitors standing toe to toe. Down on one knee. Houston wanted it bad, and he got it in the ninth. The foundation frame. Brian Boss has been very good in the clutch in many of these situations. Right now, he has an opportunity to show that he can do it again. He's got to keep that speed up. Trip out the four. Looked like a pretty nice shot from where I'm sitting. Yeah, but you saw him stand up as soon as he let the ball go. He was looking at the four pin all the way. In fact, he thought it might have more because, again, the speed was not quite good enough. And that's one of the better parts of his game, his speed control, I think. He's still in it, then. He needs to make this and give it three in the tenth on his good one. Well, after almost whipping the four one trip, he made double sure he got the ball on the wood that time. And the story is, if he strikes it out in the 10th, he finishes with 199. Houston would have to have the first one in the 10th, eight and a spare to win. I mean, the ties in the wood here, a lot of things could happen. The big thing is that Houston's on the strike saving count. Let's see if he picks up the speed this time off the eighth frame shot. He didn't, and he no. just stroked that. He soft stroked that again. He just must think that that's what he has to do over there. The baby split. He's got to make it to stay any chance to win. Any chance to win, he's got to make this baby split. Sometimes you just put too much pressure on yourself. To he's got to make. He's got to hit the three pin on the right, right here, and deflect right into the ten, hard and straight is what he's going to do. Brian knows what to do. Got to make yourself do it. He did. He does. Well, that makes it five pins with a strike right now, so count is not a major factor. He strikes, it's 187. It's going to come down. Can Dave Houston mark on this tough lane? And we've seen the ball react kind of squirrely on 24, so a mark is anything but a given at this stage. I know one thing. His dad, Champ, wife, Michelle, the kids, the whole family in Milwaukee, Oregon, looking by right now and they all got their fingers crossed well 183 but it still comes down he needs the mark needs the mark i like that fans appreciative of the effort from the top seed a tricky condition out there tonight a lot of speed oh did he get a nice break left the four pin 
All he has to do is make this. Aggressive shot. A very uh, quality speed. You know, he really didn't know exactly what to do, but he kept the speed up. Believe me, he knows what he needs. Must convert it. Right at it. And Dave Houston. Well, he needs uh, two, Dennis. Yep. He's within two <laughs> pins of winning. <laughs> yeah. The Brunswick Memorial World Open, $45,000 in the beautiful Bayliner Jazz Jet Boat Motor and Trailer Package. Stay behind it, David, and let it go. Houston, the winner of a major championship, and Brian Bosch showing the true sportsmanship up with a hug and a pat on the back. He knows how tough it is to win this tournament. There's your champion. Ken. That's right, Ken has Chevrolet Geo can give you a better deal, and they offer you a better way to buy a car. They help you find just the right vehicle for you. It's a more personalized way of doing business. Backed by their highly trained service technicians, they take care of their customers well after the sale. Hi, I'm Ken Hess. Ken Hess can. Come visit us and see what we mean. No high pressure, just great deals and great service. Ken Hess Chevrolet Geo in Middletown. away from the TV and video games, whether they want to leave or not. Because sometimes you can show them things they'll never find in their room at home. And sometimes you can teach them things that are worth learning just from you. And sometimes they can find something in themselves that they never knew they had. Bowling at BPAA Center, it's a whole lot more than a game. Clearview Lane in Mount Joy. The checkered flag drops on the NASCAR season. Dale Earnhardt shifts into high gear to wrap up his sixth Winston Cup championship. Rusty Wallace has one last chance to claim the title. Don't miss Triple Championship Weekend on ESPN. Watch the Hooters 500 Sunday on ESPN. The championship round finals of the Brunswick Memorial World Open are being brought to you by Brunswick. Bowling is sold on Brunswick. And by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. All right, winner of the Brunswick Memorial World Open, Fred Florjanic. Uh, you have a beautiful trophy for Dave Husted. Dave, congratulations. On behalf of Brunswick, let me present this beautiful trophy for the World Open right. Championship. Thanks, Fred. I'd like to thank everybody at Brunswick Corporation. They do a lot for the industry, not only industry, but professional bowlers uh, association. I'm just the happiest guy in the world. Uh, Arnie Fogle of BRC is going to make you even happier, David. Yeah, this will make you a little bit happier, David. This is a check for $45,000, biggest check we've ever given out. You're a great champion from all of us at Brunswick. We look forward to seeing you again next year and all the rest of the pros on the tour. You did a great, great show for us. I appreciate great show. that very much. I'll, I'll definitely be here as uh, long as you have us, that's we, for sure. We, we have a boat for you, too. Did we remember that? A I boat? know you really wanted a well, boat, right? I guess, I guess I'm going fishing, huh? All right. <laughs> nice going. Quickly, David, sum it up. This is a major championship, a tough, tough tournament to win, and it caps off a great career. Well, um, I'm kind of on the downside now. I'm kind of making a transition into a normal life, so... Uh, this was just a tune-up for my uh, my little boy. We're bowling a parent junior tournament this weekend, and I'm warmed up now for my son. So long, everybody. The final stop on the PBA Senior Tour with Player of the Year honors hanging in the balance comes your way from Galaxy Lanes, located in Venice, Florida with the championship round finals of the Ebonite Senior Championship beginning at a new time and a new day, of course, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, Monday, November 15th.